What's good? It's your boy Zara, All Rights Reserved. Quickly, before we get into the explanation of the things that I spoke of you about hell, let me say real quick, because people say an eye for an eye. You got to read the whole thing, okay? They're reading a certain verse, but they need to read 22. And after I finish it, I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him. And he shall pay his ju the judges to me. And if any mischief follow, then shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And that's 23 to 24. I mean, 23 to 25. And that's. Exodus chapter 21, 23 to 25. So it's talking about servants. And if a man do something to a woman and child, the husband can smite him the same. It's not talking about in life in general. They take it out of context on purpose. That doesn't mean, oh, they do something. I could do it back. That's not what it's in. They take it out of context to make it seem like you could do bad. God says, turn the other cheek, period. So don't be tricked by these guys. They're liars. That's the truth. I just told you and debunked that. No more people saying eye for an eye. That's a lie from hell. It's for a reason. It's for a husband defending his wife and child. If another man hurt them, as these lames do, they try and grab the defenseless and hurt them. Or if they hurt their servants back in the day. It's not meant for person. He said, turn the other cheek, period. Okay, let's get into it. Because you guys take things out of context and you're wrong. And they don't address you. And I'm going to address you. I'm going to call you out, sucker. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolater and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So it is after you die in the lake of fire. That's Revelation chapter 21. Got it? We won't get deeper into that. Let's hit it. Romans chapter 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you do not go through Jesus, you're going to hell. Bottom line, Romans chapter six, verse 23, the wages of sin, you sin, only Christ can forgive it. If you die in your sins, you go to hell, period. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you're not in the book of life, when you go see Jesus Christ, when you close your eyes and die, you go straight to hell. And we're going to get to what that means. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Into life eternal. The righteous. Hear me, man. Period. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In hell is destruction, okay? There's more we got to read. Matthew chapter 13, verse 50. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's pain when you're like, oh, oh. you're in pain, okay? Gnashing your teeth. Even when I can't rub them together as you're going to rub them in hell. I can't do it. You're wailing. Ah, ah, ah. That's wailing. Look up the definition. Crazy. That's what's in hell. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Glory be to God. So he's so powerful. He not only cast you into hell, he cast death and hell into the lake of fire. These are things we can't fathom. Only God knows. He takes the hell you go to on earth and he takes death and throws it into the lake of fire along with you. If you don't serve him and ask for forgiveness. Read to show yourself approved. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse nine. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Everybody who does not submit to Jesus Christ, that's you. His presence, his glory is going to condemn you and destroy you into everlasting. Everlasting doesn't end. Everlasting has no end. Jeez. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived Hear me right now, right now. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night 
forever and ever. Revelation 20 verse 10. Amen. Because that's good. But understand, God's trying to get your attention now. Submit to Jesus Christ now. People, please submit. Because that will be you. You'll go with them. He's sending you everybody with them that does this. He's, you're going to go in the lake of fire with them if you don't believe him. Psalms chapter 145 verse 20. The Lord persevereth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Period. You don't understand him. You don't love him. You're wicked. Matthew chapter 5 verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Of hellfire. We're supposed to help. If God's not calling someone a fool as I read, you're not supposed to call people fool. We're supposed to try and lead them to the light. I'm supposed to tell them, look, I'm trying to help you. If they deny me, I turn away. Turn the other cheek. You, you're not supposed to attack them back. You got to turn the cheek. That's why I told you eye for an eye is a lie from hell. I started off telling you that for a reason. Understand, I read. I know I'm approved. I read to know. An eye for an eye is a lie from hell. You'll go to hell. They're trying to trick you. I'm trying to help you. Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Like I told you, don't receive no mark. The mark, we'll get to that. Don't receive it. And we're going to talk about that. Luke chapter 16, verse, uh, we're going to hold on. Okay, Luke 12, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after that he hath killed will have power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear only him. Don't fear a bunch of people. They can't put you in the hell. They can kill your body, but they can't say, kill your soul. Only Jesus Christ can do that. So why are you why are you worried about a person or anything going on when you're not serving Jesus Christ? You should be scared of not doing that. You should be fearful running to the church. Like, how do I serve Jesus Christ? Everybody right now, run the full speed to the church. Like, how do you serve Jesus Christ? The truth, because he sends you to hell. Oh, my goodness. Y'all do not know. If only y'all know. Y'all about to find out. I'm about to help you. For the ones that listen, I got you. Don't worry, I got you. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe he's the son of God. 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came to save you. He's not here to condemn you. So I'm saying what I'm trying to tell you, he loves you. He loves all of you so much, but you got to turn from sin. Have to. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Believing in Jesus Christ is your first step to salvation. You need to. You have to. You have to. That is how you get saved. John chapter 3, verse 16, 18. Trust it. Stop playing with your life. That's the first step of salvation, guys. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. 44. Oh, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. 45. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter hell into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched 46 where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched second time said in the same chapter 47 and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of god with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire the third time where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. That means your torment is forever. It's everlasting. You never stop being tormented. You're tormented, torment, 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 torment. Forever. Come on, y'all. 
Come on, y'all. You got to read. You got to read. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. If for if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remain no more sacrifice for sins. 27, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment of fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. 28, he that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 29, of how much sore punishment supposedly shall be he thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified as an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. We're under grace and mercy. 30, for we know him that hath said, vengeance belongeth unto me, says Jesus Christ. We read that. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. He's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. He never died. He's up there right now looking at all of us, all of us right now. He didn't die. He never died. It was a, that's why they never found a body. Acts chapter 16. I mean, six chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her her masters much gain by soothsaying. It's a woman that foretells the future, future telling. She's a soothsayer. The same followed Paul in us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew up unto us the way of salvation. She knew they were the ones. She knew Jesus Christ is real. Even her. And she told them. 18. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. She was possessed. And the spirit kept even the demonic, the demon spirit kept screaming, deep, deal with Jesus Christ, deal with Jesus Christ. It was scared because it was evil. Deal with Jesus Christ, deal with Jesus Christ, deal with Jesus Christ. Deal. And Paul was walking. She was like, he's with Jesus Christ, he's with, he's with, he's with. She was bothering them because she couldn't believe it because she saw how magnificent their power was with Christ because he's the end all be all alpha and omega. She saw the power through them. He's with his people. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Satan. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteous. Man. Romans 12, 19. Again, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's simple. Ezekiel 33, 11, Chapter 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from the way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why till ye die, O house of Israel? That's all of us. Why? Because remember, he said Gentile and Jew. That's all of us. Why not turn from your evil and come to the Lord? Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. The righteous goes to life eternal. Not everlasting torment. Ezekiel chapter 18, 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. You'll be judged for all you do. You're judged. First Timothy, Timothy 5, 8. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. We have trials. You still got to work hard to provide when you can to help those around you, as I always do. Thank you, Lord. Help them as best you can. No matter what wickedness they do to you, do your best to help them and pray about it. God's is vengeance to repay. We just read that. 
Trust in him. He will give you peace. He will give you mercy. He'll give you the victory. Trust him. He'll deal with the wicked. He'll deal with the wicked. All rights reserved.